Hi guys, my name is Megan and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to make yogurt in your Instapot. Now right now Instant Pots are super popular. I recently got mine and I love it so much. I am one of those people that has the hardest time remembering to get meat out of the freezer. So this Instant Pot is a lifesaver for me. But one of our favorite things to make in it is yogurt. Now I've been making yogurt for years and I would just normally make it in my canner. I would use seven quart jars and just fill them up with milk and make it in there, but it's a lot harder for me to keep them warm for long enough. I would put them in my ice chest with warm water, but I would have to refresh the water several times, so that was pretty inconvenient. So I am so excited about this recipe, and it's so much more convenient. You just make it, and you put it in there, and it keeps it exactly where you want it until it's done. Now, I am slightly lactose intolerant. It makes my thyroid go up a little bit, so I've been trying to avoid dairy, at least bad dairy, as much as possible. So this is a great recipe for someone who is a little bit lactose intolerant, because most of the lactose gets fermented out of this yogurt, so that is perfect. I use whole milk from the grocery store. And now normally for anything else, we use raw milk. I am a huge advocate of raw milk, we love it. But for this, we're getting it up to 180 degrees and that would kill a lot of the good bacteria in raw milk. This yogurt recipe is more for just milk that has already been pasteurized. So if you can't afford raw milk and you would love to have a healthier alternative to some of your dairy products, my opinion is the next best thing to raw milk is making yogurt out of store-bought whole milk. And that just reintroduces good bacteria into it and makes it healthy to consume. So I have my milk here. I have some yogurt left over from the last batch. This is what we're gonna use as our starter culture. If you don't have any yogurt on hand, you can just go pick up some from the store. I really like Nancy's plain yogurt. Just get some sort of plain, you don't want it to already have flavorings, we just want it to be straight across plain yogurt. So whatever brand you like that tastes the best, this yogurt will end up tasting very similar to that. So let's get right into it. Okay, so we have all our supplies here. We have our Instapot with its stainless steel bowl. I have an instant read thermometer, my whisk sitting in a jar. And the reason I set this in here is because we're going to keep stirring this and I don't want to introduce new bad bacteria by keep setting it on if I had a dirty counter. So I just like to keep it in the jar. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our milk and pour it in here. If you guys don't want as much yogurt, you can just divide this in half and use a half a gallon. We're gonna, for this recipe, we're gonna use a half a cup of my yogurt starter. So if you want to divide this in half, you would use a half a gallon of milk and a quarter cup of yogurt starter. But we go through a lot of yogurt, so I'm doing as much as I can make in here. So you are just going to set it to the saute setting and we're gonna heat this up and get it to 180 degrees. I'm just gonna keep stirring it with my whisk so that it doesn't stick to the bottom or burn anywhere. So I'm just gonna stir this here and there. It's gonna take a while. After like 10 minutes, I'll keep coming back and checking on the temperature and stirring it. Look who woke up from her nap. Hi, how are you? I'm very sleepy. <laughs> So this has been going for a while now, probably like 10 to 15 minutes, and it's at about 140, so we have a bit more to go. Now the reason that we're heating it up to 180 degrees is to kill any bacteria in there that maybe infected it, and we don't want any other bacteria than the yogurt bacteria, because we don't want any other stuff competing with the yogurt bacteria. It might give it a weird taste or it won't set up quite as well. So that's why we heat it up that much. So this has reached 180, it's nice and frothy on top. I've been stirring it and keeping an eye on it really closely. So now it's reached a temperature. So we're gonna just hit the off button and then we're gonna take this out of here. Just gonna set it right next to here on some pot holders. Now the reason for this is we're gonna cool it back down to between 115 and 110 and then it'll just cool faster if it's outside of the Instant Pot. So I'm gonna still continue to stir this up with the whisk as I walk by and just keep checking on the temperature and I will be back when it's down to temperature. Okay guys, this is done now. It's just a little under 115 degrees. So now I have measured out a half a cup of my yogurt starter and I'm just gonna pour it in here. And then I'm gonna use my whisk again and make sure it's really well combined. And then I'm just gonna put this right back in here. I'm sure I do it while holding a baby. And then now we're gonna set our lid on there. 
And I took the seal out. You don't want to have it completely sealed when it's in there. You want to have a little bit of airflow. So I took the seal out. You want to remember to put this back in before you make anything else with it. And I've also heard that this can hold on to other tastes. So if you made like soup or something like that in here, it might make your yogurt taste a little bit like that. So that's another reason to take it out. We're just going to turn it so that it's completely closed. And then I'm going to press the yogurt button. And you can set it all the way up to 24 hours. Now that it's started, you can let that go anywhere from 12 to 24 hours. The longer you let it, I, <laughs> the longer you let it go, the sourer it'll get, the more probiotics it'll have. So it'll be way healthier for you. If you're lactose intolerant, the longer you let it go, the more of the lactose it will take out. The Instapot will just keep it at the exact temperature it needs to be for that long. This is just the easiest way i found. Now, if I wasn't using the Instapot, I would have to find a way to either like put it in the oven or wrap towels around a crock pot or put it in an ice chest with warm water to keep it warm and then I would have to keep checking on it, but I can just put it in there and not worry about it, like at all. All that yogurt starter we put in there is going to multiply in its good bacteria and just turn all of that milk into yogurt. So I'm gonna let that go until tomorrow. I may go the whole 24 hours and I will see you guys when it's done. The next day. Hey guys, this has been going for 21 hours now and I think it's done. I'm gonna open the lid and see how the consistency is looking. So I'm just stirring this up so you guys can see how wonderful and thick this is. This turned out so well. This is thicker than I used to be able to get it when I did it in my canner, so this is fabulous. So I'm just going to transfer this into four quart jars. I have a canning funnel and a ladle. Now one thing you guys can do, and a lot of people do this, is if you have one of those Greek yogurt strainers, it's like really fine mesh strainer, and you put it in it and then you let it sit in the refrigerator overnight, you can get this way, way thicker. And then it just separates out all the whey from the yogurt, and then you can use the whey for other things even. I don't have one of those, which is why I'm not doing it, but you can probably use like a muslin cheesecloth or something like that as well. Don't mind my super messy counter. This is rough plywood and my coffee grounds and all kinds of stuff gets stuck in there. I can't clean it out. And I'm gonna make sure I press the cancel button to turn this off. So now we have over four quarts of this lovely thick yogurt. And that was just a super easy recipe. So now this is done. What you can do is you can even add your sweetener now and then you can just scoop it right out of the jar and eat it right as is. I don't usually add my honey or maple syrup to this until I put it in a bowl to eat it because me and Luke like different sweetness levels. So, but you can put however much honey you want in this and you can eat it with berries. We love to eat it with my homemade granola. So there's just so many ways you can use this. I actually like to use this recipe to make pancakes with too and that is amazing and if you guys have an instant pot you should definitely try this it's amazing i hope you enjoyed this video i post three new videos a week on monday thursday and saturday and i will see you next time bye <laughs>